The next morning, I'm on my way, heading out of central Kathmandu. Most tourists come to trek, but the benefits of taking a longer look at Nepal's incredible architectural heritage is soon very clear. I've come to the medieval city of Bhaktapur, just one hour north of central Kathmandu. And what a wealth of untouched, unblemished architectural gems. I'm just amazed at how different Bhaktapur is to Kathmandu, although it's really just a stone's throw away from the big capital. It's incredibly different, cobbled, cobbled streets and um, really, really old buildings. And what's really amazing about Bhaktapur is the fact that although there is still an amount of tourism, it still seems pretty unaffected by, by the influx of tourists. Life still seems to just go on. Um, religious practices and people just seem to lead, lead their daily lives without really being affected by tourism. You pay to get into this town, but once there, it's worth every cent. Bhaktapur has three major squares. In this one, the towering temple Nyathapola. It's the tallest in the country, its steps guarded by the statuesque figures of its guardians. This is a true artisan's town, for Nepal's traditionally strict use of the Hindu caste system dictated it that way. Intricate wood carving features large, perhaps the most famous, this peacock carving of a window in a 15th century mansion. Working with clay was assigned to the city, and in Pottery Square, the tradition delightfully lives on. In so many of the homes around here, there's a wheel that's spun by the men, pot after pot, the wheels never ceasing. Women help fire them in mud-covered straw kilns. The smell of clay, grass and cow dung filling the afternoon air. Nearby, such traditional skills live on, but now in a new way. Meet the Taze family. Brothers, wives and kids. Inside their home, the extended family work with clay. But this is work with a difference. For rather than providing for the unscrupulous middlemen of the eternal tourist trinket trade, they work for ACP, the Association of Craft Producers. Every woman has got some skill, either sewing, or uh, embroidery, or pottery making, but uh, never used as a profession, as their profession. We use that skill only as hobby. And we, ACP, realized that women need money in their hand, and we tried to turn that into profession, hobby into profession. We have been able to demonstrate that successfully. You have to have a good working condition. You have to have good quality raw material uh, for the product you make. We, we have obligations to educate our children. Um, and we have to take care of the environment, you know. These, these sort of things, you know, really uh, is very meaningful for the grassroots producers. The aim of ACP, fair trading, fair prices, fair working conditions, and above all, a fair deal for the women workers of Nepal. The system is organized so women can work in their homes, training is given and new products commissioned. The goal is a regular, adequate wage to supplement family income and improve overall standards of living. The large ACP service center is key to the way the business operates. We prepare the raw material in the center and we do the finishing of craft which comes from outside um, this premises uh, all over Nepal and uh, we provide the technical support to them, we provide design information. Products coming back from producers may be quality checked for size or like these Easter bunnies given a finishing coat of paint. Materials might be washed, dyed or patterns added. There's a long relationship between ACP and New Zealand. For many years, New Zealand wool has been imported into Nepal. At ACP, it's carded, dyed and shipped to producers to make all sorts of products. Products that have sustained another long relationship with the New Zealand connection. The Trade Aid Shop. And Trade Aid, the mission of the Trade Aid and mission of ACP is the same. Okay, working with the low income sector, uh, people at the grassroots. Uh, we are sen selling our goods to them, first of all, but no, that's, that doesn't end there, not only trading. And it is uh, really for development, you know, I mean, trade for development. Development of products like this non-traditional glass art designed in Wanganui is the latest testimony to the successful relationship between New Zealand and Nepal. 
After the long line of production, this is where the products end up, in the ACP store in Kathmandu, one of Nepal's pioneering fair trade shops. Uh, in the world market, you know, when uh, our competitors are many more than we think and uh, our price should be competitive, it's very difficult sometimes. But people are more educated, consumer, end consumer are more educated. They don't mind paying $2 more for the fair trade, you know, uh, product than the, uh, than the commercial sector. You know. So in a country where so many women are trapped in a cycle of poverty, the Association of Craft Producers plays an inspirational and heartwarming role. Nepal has such a rich history of arts and crafts and the reason why I think ACP's work is so empowering is because it helps preserve those artisan skills by combining it with tradition, business and most importantly dignity. Next week, Nepal's unique Buddhist and Hindu mix. I spend a night in a Buddhist monastery and pay my respects at the Hindu temple of Pashupatinath. Here at the funeral ghats I learn of an eye hospital close by built so that corneas of the deceased may be transplanted to provide new sight. And at the same time, there's cataract surgery made possible by a remarkable New Zealand man. That's next week on Asia Down Under. This program was made with funding from New Zealand on Air.